morning. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. Just want to make sure my sound is good. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah, in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. They went into the country of Moab and they remained there. But Eliminak, her son, I mean her husband, the wife of Naomi, well, he died. And she was left with her two sons. And these two, her sons, took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. And when they lived there about 10 years, both of her sons died. And the women, they were there with Ruth even though Ruth didn't have her sons nor her husband. Didn't have her sons or her husband. All right. I want to, I want to minister this morning under the sermon topic, women, mothers in crisis, mothers in crisis. That's my sermon topic this morning. Mothers in crisis. For most of her adult life, Naomi lived, she lived life in crisis mode. As a young married woman, the crisis she and her family faced was a, fam was a famine in the land, crisis mode. Some people among the populations of the world today they have absolutely no idea what it means to live in crisis. I know people like that. They don't, they don't have a clue of what it means to live a life in crisis. Some people in the world population, they live such a life of privilege, such a life of privilege that having to be under crisis that we're in right now as a world, it is a momentary irritation for them, and they can barely handle it. Yet there are mothers who have lived their entire lives in crisis mode. Can I get an amen right there? And yet they, they keep living. Yes, they do. And yet they keep loving. Yes, they do. And yet they keep getting up every day and striving for a way out of crisis. Even if they can't see a way out, they keep getting up with some hope. They got a hope down on the inside of them that they can get out of their crisis mode. Amen. Naomi's husband relocated the family to escape the crisis. And after settling among a different group of people, and this group of people, because he was from Judah, he went to Moab. These are spiritually different people. They are nationally different. He took his family there because they were trying to get out of what? Crisis. So they relocate, running away from the crisis of family, famine with his wife, and with his two children, trying to get away. And, and now, once they get there, here comes a brand new crisis that is being brought upon this woman, and now she is a widow. The new crisis is being a widow with two children in a strange land, a foreign land, because the scripture doesn't tell us how long they lived there before he died. Naomi's son, both of his son, both of her sons, they marry, they marry some women, and ten years later, here comes another crisis. 
both of the sons die. Can somebody say crisis? crisis. Here comes another crisis. Both of the sons die. Naomi, still in crisis, she gets a word from the Lord that the famine back at home has passed away. And so she and her daughters head back to her homeland. It's her homeland. It's not their homeland. But these are now her daughters. And so this crisis is too much to bear. So they pack up in crisis. And they begin to move back to her homeland. This crisis has gotten the best of Naomi. This is her life. This, these are years of her life, of living in crisis. But this last one, with her sons dying, it, she can't handle it anymore. It has gotten the best of her. It has really, really rocked her soul. So she, she starts moving back towards home, and then she decides in her own mind that she would rather spare her daughters the life crisis that she has known. So she says to her daughters, you guys need to go back to your families. She wasn't trying to be cruel, but Naomi had lived her life in crisis. And she was heading back home. She is a widow, her sons are deceased. And for Naomi, for all she knows, it's not going to be good, but she's heading home. And so she says to her daughter, just stay here with your families. Cause she knew that their families would take care of them. Crisis had really taken the biggest and it's worst bite out of her soul because these, these young ladies were her daughters. And you mean to tell me that now she's at a place where she was willing to live what alone without the only two people left in her life. She has spent years with these girls. These are her daughters. You know she had to be in a true, hurting, desperate place to say to them, yeah, you guys just go back home. Go back to your family. I'm trying to tell you that there, there are people who have lived their entire life in crisis. And, and you're in a crisis now. And maybe this is the crisis that has taken its biggest bite and its worst bite out of your soul. Mm -hmm. Ruth in chapter one, verse 14, this is what we read. Let me read it to you. I'm, don't close your Bibles. Come on, don't close your Bibles. And in verse 14, it says, after she tells them, you, you all go on back home, just, just going, back to your pe going back to your people, verse 14 says, and then they wept loud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. This is an emotionally devastating moment. This is a horrible, low place in the soul. The scripture says that they wept aloud. It wasn't just, it wasn't just Naomi weeping. All three of these women, the, these were her daughters. Forget the in-laws. These were her daughters. And they're all weeping. Why? Because this crisis has taken a huge bite out of their soul. And for any of them to leave, it was yet, you mean I got to lose my husband and my mom-in-law? Oh, this was a horrible, horrible crisis, another crisis moment. So Oprah leaves and Ruth says, I'm staying with you. So Naomi and Ruth, mother and daughter, they begin to travel towards a promise. What you say, pastor, a promise? Oh, absolutely. They begin to travel towards a promise. Even though she was in an emotionally dark place, crisis had taken its biggest bite out of her soul to date. But what caused her to keep moving was a promise established by God and it would be back in Judah. See, I've been talking every weeknight about God being the redeemer. 
and how in redemption, he buys back for us what we lose. And so in this moment, what we see is that um, Naomi knows that there is a law about the king's, the king's, the kingship redeemer, the kingsman redeemer, and that all she needs to do is to absolutely go back to this promise. That's all she has is the promise of the word that there are some family members that will redeem her back. And so she gets up and she moves. And that's a word for some mothers this morning. Oh, yes. There are some words for mothers this morning because around the world, I don't care what part, what continent you're in. I don't, I don't care what time zone you're in. This, what we are experiencing is crisis. I don't care how you slice it. Even if you're staying at home, it's still crisis because as you look around and you see what is happening, some to people that you know, and then some to people that you don't know, but if you got any, any ounce of compassion, then you feel the crisis. You feel the crisis. Even if you're safe at home, you feel the crisis because compassion will not let you be stony heart. Amen. I want to speak to you today while our world is in crisis. Glory to God. I want to speak to you while our world is in crisis. Mothers have suddenly died from COVID. Mothers have died. They've suddenly died, leaving their children in crisis. Mothers have lost their children and their spouses to this virus around the world. Can somebody say mother's in crisis on this mother's day? This mother's day is different because crisis has taken a huge bite out of the soul of families around the world. And if you have any ounce of compassion, that should touch you as well. Maybe you are feeling like Naomi. I'm talking to somebody today. Maybe you're feeling not like Naomi who expressed that, that she felt like God was dealing bitterly with her. She, she didn't, she, she just felt like God was, God was not treating her right. And, and I'm talking to somebody who might be feeling that way this morning because this crisis has taken a huge bite out of your soul. I'm, I want to talk to you this morning. This is not a normal Mother's Day. No, no, no. I don't care where in the world you are. This is not a normal Mother's Day. And if you are feeling like, like the God I serve, the God who created the heaven and the earth, the God who created the universe, now, he ain't the universe, he created the universe. The, the God who steps into time and makes himself known. Maybe you are feeling like, my God, whose son is Jesus Christ, who is the only way to God, who says, don't even have another God beside me. Maybe you feel like my God has dealt bitterly with you in the midst of this crisis. Naomi made that statement because she was feeling at her lowest point. This is a woman whose life, for the most part, she had known crisis. The scripture tells us that when she and Ruth made it back to town, there were some other women who saw Naomi. They hadn't seen Naomi in years. Amen. But they saw Naomi and they asked, is that Naomi? And Naomi told them, listen, don't, don't even call me that. I'm, I'm going to change my name. And I'm going to give myself a name that communicates the bitterness and the hurt in my soul. The bitterness and the hurt in my, he said, call me Mara because the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. She was hurt when she made that statement to the women as she returned home. But this is what I find to be interesting, sisters and brothers. Scripture records the women seeing Naomi. Scripture records the women acknowledging Naomi. The scripture records Naomi talking to them. But what I find interesting is that mm, 
I'm thinking about my roommate, Karen. What I'm finding interesting here is that when Naomi responds to the women and say, hey, don't even call me that, call me Mara, because the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. She expressed the sorrow in her soul because of the crisis that she had been in. But guess what? The scriptures record nothing else from these women. There's no response from these women. They say nothing. The scriptures have no response to the women. They knew who she was. They knew she was coming home. Where's your husband? Where are your children? Who is this lady? They, they recognize that everything about Naomi's life has changed. She communicates to them, oh my God, her hurt and her pain. But the scripture says they say nothing. Dr. Greenbaugh, why is that important? Because when you are in crisis, how many of you can say amen to the fact that when you've been in a crisis and you actually take the risk of telling somebody the crisis that you're in, guess what? They have nothing to say. They are silent. Mums is the word. They don't have anything to say at all. They are as silent as you can imagine. They say nothing at all. Why do they say nothing at all? Because sometimes they can't handle your pain. Come on, somebody. Say amen. They can't handle your pain. That's Listen, my roommate Karen, in case Karen is watching, my roommate and Karen, I think that's one of the places where we bonded the most because I could handle her pain when she wanted to talk and she could handle mine. Come on, somebody. But how many times when you are living in a life of crisis, people would rather, come on, I'm trying to tell somebody, people would rather turn their head towards you than to look you in your eye and see the crisis crisis in your life, see the toll that the crisis is having on your life, see the aftermath of what is going on in your life, they would rather turn and act like you didn't say anything, they didn't see anything, they want to act like nothing is happening, why? Because they can't handle your truth, they cannot handle your crisis, they can't handle your crisis. And so right here, when Naomi responds to these women and she shares her soul's cry, the friends, the women who knew her and knew she was going through, they go mute on her. I want to ask you this morning, have anybody gone mute on you? Has anybody gone silence and ghost you because you in crisis right now? Come on, talk to me, people of God. Ah, talk to me this morning. Glory, hallelujah. Whoo! Maybe it is this way for you. Maybe this is what you are going through. Not only are you going through the hardest crisis of your life, but people that know you and know you going through, they've gone mute. They've ghosted you. They don't have anything to say. They won't return your phone calls. They won't return your text messages. They, they surely are not going to throw you a lifeline. But uh -oh, they, they, they just distant. They're not around. Maybe your soul is in a very painful place. Glory to God. Maybe your soul is in a very painful place this morning. Glory to God. Maybe the people that you express your pain to on this Mother's Day have nothing of substance to say to you. Well, I'm here this morning to tell you that you can make it through this crisis. Oh, you better believe me today. You can make it through this crisis. Listen, if the other people that you were depending on, they don't, they ghost you. They're not returning your text messages. They won't call. They won't even send a smoke signal your way. They know you're going through and you can't find them anyway. I'm here to tell you, not only can you make it through, but let me be the voice that you were expecting to hear from somebody else. I can say this to you because I've had my own share of crisis. <laughs> Woo, sometimes the Lord will make you laugh at your hardships. Glory to God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've had my own share of crisis, people of God. Now, if you know me, if you know me for real, you know I have. 
If you don't know me, then you think, oh, you, you, you ain't never had no problems. You just have no idea. Amen. I've had my own share of crisis. So I can tell you from my own personal experience that it is possible to be healed from crisis. Even if another round of crisis is trying to show up in your life. I need to help somebody to know that when I tell you that you can make it through this crisis, I know what I'm talking about. You can make it through. And I don't mean make it through, you know, just dragging your feet. I don't mean just barely making it over the finish line. I don't mean that you just, you know, hobbling along, just, you know, no, 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 no. I mean, you can make it through a crisis and be healed of that crisis. I know what I'm talking about. Amen, somebody. So on this Mother's Day, let me remind you, and for some, let me inform you. I said, let me remind you and let me inform you. Glory to God. Let me remind you and let me inform you on this morning. Glory to God. Here is the good news. Jesus's ministry of intercession is active for you today. That, that's the message for you. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father forever making intercession for us. What is intercession? That means when you talk on behalf of somebody else. When you, are, when you um, I think about social workers. I, I Once upon a time, I had a, a really good friend who was a social worker. And, and what the social workers will do is they get in the gap for someone who is in the hospital to make sure that when they get um, released from the hospital, not all social workers, I'm talking about the hospital ones, that when a person gets released, that they have the resources that are set up so that they can um, succeed towards their restoration once they get out. That 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 they do the work of intercession. Uh, um, it's, it's like attorneys. Sometimes attorneys do the work of intercession. They stand in and speak for you when you can't seem to get your point across. Listen, Jesus, who who is the chief judge for us. He jumps in and he actually does the work of intercession. The Bible says that Jesus is on the right hand of the father and he is making intercession for you and for me. And it doesn't matter uh, what's going on in your life because he has in all wise been tested and experienced what we experience. He can make intercession for you. And so if you're in Christ, right now and you want to come out of crisis and yet you have been so hurt in your spirit because of the crisis I'm here with the good news this morning that Jesus's ministry of intercession is still in operation for you and the Lord has never lost a case can I get an amen right there Amen. His ministry of intercession is active and alive and working right now. Woo, Jesus, that gets me excited. Jesus is interceding for you. And wait a minute. Now, I know he could do it all. But then in addition to the fact that Jesus is interceding for you, can I tell you that I'm interceding for you? Glory to God. On this Mother's Day, I want you to know that I'm interceding for you, mother. I want you to know, family, that I'm interceding for mothers and families who are in crisis right now because what is happening in the world has taken its biggest bite, its, its most severe chunk out of your soul. And you're wondering, is anybody praying? Is anybody understanding what I'm going through? I'm here to tell you that Jesus is interceding and this message this morning is a message of intercession to let you know that not only will Jesus handle your situation but you are not by yourself there are people who are praying specifically for those of you who are feeling like Naomi that the Lord has dealt differently and bitterly with them I'm here to let you know the Lord has not dealt bitterly with you it's just a bitter situation the Lord has not attacked you it's just a bitter difficult situation amen somebody I'm about to close this message Ruth's life as we read on through the book of Ruth, and I do encourage you to do that, as we read on through the book of Ruth, you will learn that Ruth's life was redeemed. Can somebody say amen to being redeemed? Glory to God. 
Ruth's life was redeemed along with Naomi's life because even in her crisis as the daughter with the mama in crisis, even in a life of crisis, Naomi kept moving towards the promise of redemption that had been established in the body of God way back when they came out of slavery. Glory to God. You got to go back and read Leviticus for that. But there was, there was an establishment for the Kingsman Redeemer. And when Naomi moved back home, she was moving back towards the promise of redemption. And once she got back, as the word of the Lord shows us in great detail, just how both Naomi and Ruth's crisis went away, the Lord redeemed them. Not only did he redeem them from, from famine, not only did he redeem them from the grief of loss, not only did he redeem her from an uncertain future, he even put her into the line of Jesus Christ, who is the redeemer. Come on and say amen. And so this is what I want to say to everyone watching me today on Mother's Day or whenever you happen to see this message. If you are at that place where you feel like the crisis mode that you live in has taken its biggest bite out of your soul, has taken its biggest scratch and clawed you in the back, has taken its biggest hit yet, I want you to know that you can be healed and Jesus Christ is the great redeemer redeemer. He is interceding for you and I'm interceding. And this is the word that I have for you today. I want to know if you're ready for this word. I want to know if you're ready. This is the one instruction people of God. I have for you, unless I get excited and come up with another one. The one instruction that I have for you, 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 you mother, you, you son, you daughter, anybody who is in this place of crisis this morning, here's the word I have for you. Move, just keep moving towards the redeemer. Amen. If Naomi had stayed where she was, yes, it probably would have ended in a life of crisis, but she kept moving towards the promise of God, the promise of redemption. She kept moving. She relocated. I cannot, um, I've moved several times. Glory to God. And none of those times have been fun. Amen. And, and so I cannot imagine what courage it must have taken Naomi to leave Moab and go back to her home. I, I cannot imagine she did not have bodyguards. She did not have a whole bunch of people to help her. Can you imagine uh, what it must have taken on the inside of her. She had to dig deep. Now this is a woman mourning. This is a woman whose soul has been devastated, but something down on the inside of her gave her enough to say, I'm going back home. There's a, pro I, if I remember the word, there's a promise for me, a promise of redemption for me. And, and if I've got to take a step by myself, if I've got to travel this road by myself, I'm going to do it. Can you imagine she probably had to dig deep down on the inside of herself to get the resolve to say, I'm going back home. And so the word that I have for you this morning, for anybody who feels like this crisis is too much on this mother's day. All the word to you is to keep moving towards redemption. Keep moving. I don't care how far deep down you've got to go to unearth some strength, then go there and pull it up. I don't care how far down in your memory you have to go to get a word from the Lord that'll keep you moving. Come on and pull it up. Pull up whatever you need to pull up from down in your spirit, from down in your soul. It might be as small as this mustard seed but whatever you have pull that thing up and decide I'm going to keep moving 
Keep moving. Keep moving towards the Redeemer. Keep moving towards the Redeemer. Listen, you got to keep moving. Keep putting one most foot in front of the other. Listen, you might be overtaken by the fact that now you thought you were going to get some unemployment and now they're doing a little tricky thing and you're not getting the unemployment and it's time to pay your rent. It's time to pay everything. I'm going to say to you, keep moving. Keep moving. Just dig down deep and pick up that phone and listen, call that customer service and just listen keep moving sometimes keep moving means you call the people and say listen I don't have the money to pay you right now but just come on and give me a little bit of grace pray before you call and say father in the name of Jesus I need some grace right now I, I, I need some grace right now I'm calling on the God who is my redeemer I know you're going to buy back everything I lost I don't have to be overtaken by what I lost but I'm going to pull on the fact that there is a promise of the redeemer I know my redeemer lives I, I know my Redeemer lives. I'm trying to tell you, just keep moving towards the Redeemer. Oh, maybe you just need to cry. I know how that feels. Maybe you just need to cry and say, God, I can't see my way through, but I know that my Redeemer is not a liar. I know that my God will bring me through. God, I know that the sun will shine. I know that weeping does endure for a night, but I trust that my joy is going to come in the morning. I'm not psychotic. I'm not misaligned. I'm not strange. I just have faith in the Redeemer. I have faith in my Lord. I have faith in my God. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you what I know. I know that the Lord can bring you out. I know that the odds can be set against you, but as long as you don't give up, as long as you keep moving, don't stop. Keep moving. And sometimes your movement is walking away around your home and making the declaration this is my home and the Lord is going to sustain me these are my children and the Lord is going to sustain me lay your hands on your body and begin to pray over your body that's what it means to just keep on moving I know some of you have underlying conditions but why don't you go get yourself some anointed oil and just grease yourself all the way down and say God I'm moving in faith that you will heal my body come on anoint your mind and say, God, give me an idea about what I can do to improve my health. I plead the blood of Jesus over my underlying conditions. I, I plead the blood of Jesus uh, around my home. I, I plead the blood of Jesus over my circumstances. I'm going to keep moving towards my Redeemer. I'm not going to let this crisis take me out, uh, but I'm going to rise in the hope of my Redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah unto Jesus. Hallelujah unto Jesus. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I know that he is working full time on my circumstances. And you need to open your mouth. That's right. That's why I did that declaration. You need every day to open your mouth and begin to recite the promise of God. I don't care if you can't figure out how it's going to happen. Just come on and keep moving and begin to make the declarations. My God will not leave me and my God will not forsake me. I'm going to keep my hope in my God. I know that God has a plan for my redemption. And I know that God is going to buy back whatever I've lost. Or oh, whatever I commend unto him, he is able to keep it until the very end. I want you to get your strength. I want, listen. Even if you just have a little bit of strength, my brother, my sister, mother can't get that little bit of strength and put it to work. Don't let it lie there dormant. Put that strength to work on this mother's day. Glory to God. Put it to work on this mother's day. That's the word of the Lord that I have for you. That's the word of the Lord. And, and, and might I say, that if this message doesn't really apply to you because you don't know crisis and, and you don't know trauma and, and you don't, you don't know, you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to be concerned when your child goes out for a jog, just minding their business. You don't have a clue the concern 
about when your husband gets in the car and goes for a ride, that they, 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 don't, have, they don't have the luxury. They don't have the luxury of assuming that they can just go out for a walk and not be bothered. You don't know this kind of crisis. Well, honestly, I wouldn't say that you need to experience because nobody, I don't want anybody to experience crisis and trauma because sometimes people, they don't know how to make it back from that. But I would, I'm praying right now for those who have no compassion, none, I'm praying with everything in me every day that the God of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, would snatch the veil off your eyes so that you can at least see through the eyes of compassion for those people who live in crisis and trauma every day. Because if you have enough compassion for them, maybe you'll pray for them. Amen, somebody. If you have some compassion for people who are in crisis and trauma, maybe you'll intercede for them instead of turning a blind eye like it doesn't matter. On this Mother's Day, I think about all of the families in places like New York, in places like Georgia, shucks, in places like Detroit, where thousands of people have died because of this global crisis. I don't even know the numbers in other places, but the hot spots, they call them hot spots. And on this Mother's Day, my heart is so heavy. My heart is heavy. And I want you to know that the Lord Jesus is interceding for you and I'm interceding for you. And there are other believers who don't think it's robbery to go before God on behalf of these families, on behalf of these families, on behalf of these mothers and mothers to be and say, God, you are a God of redemption, redeem what they've lost. Redeem what they've lost. Listen, Naomi's life did not end in crisis. And I'm not saying that the redemption in the end removed the sorrow of losing her husband and her sons. I'm not saying that. When you lose someone, it sticks with you. But the whole of her life was lived in such a way that she knew that God loved her. And that's what I want to say to you as, as we begin to close. You need to know that the Lord loves you, even in the midst of this crisis, even in the midst of your loneliness, even in the midst of your desperation, even in the midst of grieving your plans, even in the midst of grieving an uncertain future. Listen. The Lord loves you, and there are Christians who love you too and are interceding for you even if we don't know your name. I'm trusting God for you like I'm trusting God for me. I'm trusting God to redeem for you just like I'm trusting God to redeem for me. We all have to stand on his word. We all have to trust him. We all have to lean on him. And I want to say to you, this may have taken a bite out of you, but don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up for yourself and don't give up for the generations behind you. In the end, Naomi and Ruth become a part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. There are generations ahead who need you not to give up. There are generations in the future who need you to trust God to be your redeemer. Don't give up. Press in. Press in. And for all of you who, who are intercessors, Come on, begin to pray for people in crisis on this Mother's Day. 
Amen. It's one of the best gifts you can give to a family right now. You may not be able to go and buy roses. You certainly can't go out to dinner. <laughs> but what you can do is stand in the gap for that family. Glory to God. Stand in the gap for that family. Stand in the gap for that family. For that mother. Let me tell you something. Men and women, we're made very differently. I, uh -huh. and, but when mom, when mom goes down, it affects the whole household. <laughs> That's why we've got to pray for every woman today. Yeah. Whether you've birthed children or adopted them or taken someone under your wing, we need the soul of the mother to be healed. Amen. And so come on, let's get, let's get in gear. Let's get in gear. Grab it. Go deep inside of who you are and trust your redeemer. Amen. Oh God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My God. I pray that this message has has encouraged your heart on today. And, um, and I know that some people who are watching, I pray that there are some people who are watching who do not have a relationship with Jesus. I, I hope and pray that there's someone, maybe you are a backslider, uh, maybe someone, you, you weren't raised in church, nobody took you to church, nobody taught you the Bible. I hope that there are people like that watching. I hope that there are people who have been wandering and you've wandered far from the Lord. I hope you're watching. And for you, I want to say that you, you, you should make a decision to turn your life around, whether you're in crisis or not. You know, talking to people who don't know crisis, who don't know hardship and telling them that they need a savior, they look at you kind of strange because <laughs> they, they, they've trusted so much in themselves. But I'm here to say that never mind what your bank account is, you're still shut in. You can't go nowhere. I don't care how rich you are. You're not supposed to be going anywhere. But no matter your situation, if you don't have Jesus Christ, I'm a Christian. I'm unashamedly a Christian. And I want to say to you, will you give Jesus Christ your life? He paid for you to have eternal life with the Father. He is the only way to the Father. And there are many gods but I serve the one true and living God. Amen. Not other deities. I serve the one true God. And there's only way, one way to him. And his name is Jesus. And he is the anointed one, which means the Christ. So if you're watching this service this morning and this, this sermon has pricked your heart, touched your heart, and you realize after doing an analysis of your life and your soul that you are, that you are far from God and you don't have a saving relationship through Jesus Christ, I want to offer the, you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. I want you to pray this prayer with me and, and I'm doing this by faith. Come on, Father Jesus, I acknowledge the fact that, come on, pray, come on. I want you to pray with me. Come on, Jesus, I acknowledge that you are the son of God. I recognize that you died to pay the cost of sin for all of humanity. And I accept you as my gift for eternal life, my savior. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Restore me to relationship with the father. Um, I want to be cleansed. I, I want sin out of my life. I want to be in relationship with you. And I want you to be my Lord, not just my savior. I want you to talk to me. I want you to be with me. You are the friend that sticks closer than anyone else. So I give my life to you. Oh, I give my life to you. And I thank you for saving me from my sins. Thank you for saving me from even myself. And Father, as I have given my life over to Jesus, I renounce all darkness. I renounce 
all submission and worship of other deities. I renounce sin. I renounce anything that is not like you. And I want you to give me the indwelling, the promise, your promise of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to fill me, um, empower me, and do your ministry in me. And I receive it by faith in the people of God say amen. 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 God bless you. And if you've prayed that prayer to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ or, or to rededicate yourself to Jesus, please reach out to me and let me know. Please, 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 please reach out to me and let me know. And I congratulate you on making a decision that will benefit not only you, but generations um, behind you, generations to come, and everybody in your circumference of life. I salute you for that. Now, listen, the last, the last thing I want to say is maybe you're watching and you are not a member, an active member in a church. Maybe you are, you know, they have this thing now where people, um, they don't want to live in homes. They buy vans and they ride around and they sleep in the back of their van. Their van is their home. Um, and even if they deck out the vans, they don't have a permanent place to live. Listen, you, your spirit, your soul, your body, you need a church home where you can um, be a part of, you know that this is where you're going to park your life and you're going to invest your life and you're going to sit under the teaching and the covering of a house. If you don't have a house, a spiritual house, I want to offer the opportunity to be a part of Creative Worship Center. If this shut-in hasn't taught you anything, it has taught you that you need a church home and you need a pastor. You need a rich word that is going to not only get you excited, but it's going to feed your spirit and you're going to grow and know the word of God for yourself. Yeah, so I want to offer you the opportunity to be a part of Creative Worship Center. I'd love to be your pastor. Amen. Glory to God. So if you would like to be a part of our ministry, if you'd like to join because you live in the greater Detroit area, reach out to me. If you live someplace else in another time zone and on another continent and you want to be a part of us, um, um, come on, reach out to me and let me know. I'll tell you how we can do it. If you want to be a partner with our ministry, but you know that you're planted someplace else, but you want to connect with us, reach out. Let's have the conversation and let's let's go to God together to see how we can be a body and a family together. Come on and say amen, everybody. Come on and say amen. Bless the bless the Lord. And we will, we will, in fact, respond to you. Well, we're getting ready to go. Husband, is there anything that I've forgotten? No? Amen. So God bless everyone who is here. If Amen. Okay, so here are a couple of things that um, um, Mr. Barr says that I need to um, share with you. Number one is we need to be getting your emails. <laughs> So if you're not, I mean, you're, uh, we need to be communicating with you. So if we, if you're not getting our emails, come on and get on our list. Just look for this sign right here on our Facebook page so that we can get your email so that we can stay in communications with you. Amen. And again, a wonderful, happy mother's day. And I'm giving all of the mothers a great big old hug to say happy Mother's Day to you and God bless you. Amen and amen. So come on, let me give you even now the benediction, even now, amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his throne with exceeding joy. He is the all wise God with all power and majesty and dominion, both now, henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen.